Good evening, everybody. Welcome. Is this a wonderful crowd on a Friday night in Sedona? I'd like to say you're coming to see me, but I have a feeling it's Ruth, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, all right, all right, fine. The diva will have her stage later. Just relax. Um, we're very excited to have you. I'm Pat Schweiss, the director of the theater and the festival, and we couldn't be more proud than to partner with you Sufis, or Yay! Sufers, as you're called, right? I heard you're called both, Sufis and Sufers. Is that right? That's awesome. Well, this is this is our first time partnering with you, although we've been longtime co companions with Michelle Snyder and the wonderful newsletter that she puts out and Yay! includes us. So thank you, Michelle. And thank all of you in the fellowship for being part of our year-round activities here by coming to our films. We are very, very grateful, and we couldn't be more proud of tonight. Um, I've known the Waddells a long time. We've had Amy's films here, including this one, in, in the festival and here at the theater. And uh, so we're very, very excited that this has kind of come full circle to be able to celebrate. And we're thrilled Ruth is going to join us um, at the end of the film for a Q&A. So uh, we're going to bring her in. She turns 97, as you all know, in just a couple of weeks. Isn't that cool? Yes, yes, yes. So we're celebrating her birthday tonight, as you all know, and um, because she is about to turn 97, she's very, very conscious of not catching COVID. So um, she is going to, we're going to whisk her in the stage door to come up and have a Q&A with us. We're going to whisk her back out the stage door, and she would love very much to see all of you out at the studio individually. So uh, we'll tell you how you can do that. That's, you can arrange that through Amy um, in the back, and there's going to be an email address you can get and everything. Ruth would very much like to see all of you up close and personal. She just doesn't want to see 100 of you all at the same time up close and personal. Um, so we're very glad. I am so excited because uh, Paul, I think Paul and Tanya came to me first with this, right? Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. And, um, and they introduced me to someone who I'm just so sad I haven't known longer, but now I hope we're going to become very, very long and dear friends. Reverend Anthony is what I want to be when I grow up. I know you're a fellowship, but if every church on the planet had someone like you, there'd be a whole different vision of, of religion happening over here. I have so enjoyed him, and you are so lucky to have him. Um, I can't, I know you all know that. That's what, that's part of the reason why you're here tonight, too. And his enthusiasm and his love for his fellowship is beyond compared. It gives me great, great, great pleasure to introduce a very new and dear friend already. Give it up, Reverend Anthony. Thank you, Pat. And I'll just do a quick, let's give it up for Mary Fisher Theater. Yeah. So I just wanted to step in just a moment on behalf of uh, the little engine that could, i.e. the Sedona Unitarian Universalist Fellowship. And in the spirit of rising, I'm going to put some folks on the spot and ask our board of directors if you're able. Okay, if you're on our board, will you stand? Will you rise? And let's give them a hand. The folks couldn't make it happen. And I also wish to acknowledge, keep it going, all the volunteers. You know who you are. We love you. We need you. Thank yeah. you for doing what you do. And uh, I would be remiss if I didn't point out Ruth's artwork that is on display and, you know, and for purchase in the lobby. All proceeds go to the darling Ruth Waddell. And we have a special something tonight and talking with Ruth when I had the flash and brought the idea to Paul and Tanya and Ruth said yes and they said yes and here we are in this beautiful evening tonight. So life is a good thing. Ruth said, I want to share with you one of John's most intricate pieces. And I'm going to ask my friends to go bring that up now. We have a piece, an original Waddell sculpture, that we will be auctioning right now. So we're going to do it before the film. How about that? So Patrick is going to help us do that. We can set that maybe up there somewhere. Well, let, here, let's have Vanna White step into the light. Come this way. Come this way. It's, bright, it's brightest right in the middle. Here we go. <laughs> Doesn't he make a lovely Vanna? Yeah. All right, what we're looking at is Reclining Mother and Babe by John Waddell. It's a limited edition bronze number nine of 15. There's only 15 of these in the world. Again, as Reverend Anthony said, donated completely by Ruth. And 100% of what we sell this for tonight goes to the fellowship. 
So do 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 bid off it. Raise your hands right now. Just raise your hands in the air so you get used to this. Here you go. Come on. Everybody, everybody raise your hands. It's just hands. practice. It's just practice. And, and you know, it's really okay for husbands and wives to bid against each other. It makes it even more fun. Okay. So um, we want to we want to get this. The value on it is thirty eight hundred dollars. If it was selling for resale or for a, in a gallery. But just today we were told by the foundry that does this, yes. that does the molds, it's such an intricate design that actually they would suggest selling something like this for $10,000. That's how much it's worth because of all the work that goes into it at the foundry. Um, so, Vanna, spin a little bit. <laughs> they, need, they need to see your backside. <laughs> Not your backside, spin that one. <laughs> Thank you, Paul. <laughs> take that pressure off. Paul, we really need to take this show on the road. This will be very fun. You need to invite me to one of your fellowships. This could be a lot of fun. Okay, so it is valued at anywhere between thirty-eight and ten, thirty-eight hundred and ten thousand um, dollars. And uh, again, it is a major tax deduction, uh, especially if you go over the value of it. Um, and you're making a very big impact to the fellowship. One hundred percent of this goes to the fellowship. So let's start the bidding at uh, fifteen hundred dollars. Fifteen hundred. Fifteen. Someone give me fifteen hundred dollars. Fifteen hundred. Fifteen hundred. Right back there in the back of the room. Thank you very much, Tanya. Fifteen hundred. How about seventeen fifty? Seventeen fifty. Someone give us seventeen fifty. Come on, come on. We got some collectors in here. Say right back there. Oh, thank you. Robin, I appreciate that. 1750, how about 2000? 2000, 2000, 2000. Anyone want to do this? 2000 dollars? Come on, let's go. An original John Waddell limited edition. 2000 dollars right here. Thank you very, very much. How about 2250? 2250, 2250, 2250, right here. Excellent. 2500, 2500. Someone go to 2500? 2500? Come on, gotta make this side of the room can get in on the action, you know. 2500, we're at 2250 right now. 2500, 2500. Anyone go for 2500? Anyone want to go for 2500? It goes to the fellowship. It goes to the fellowship. You can have a very big party after this. 2,500, 2,500. We got 2,250 right here, right now. 2,250 going what? 2,500, excellent, thank you much, very much. 2,750, 2,750, anyone going 2,750? 2,750, come on, you want it? Want it, Robin? 2,750, you know you do, you got a new mantle, you want to put something on. 2,750, 2,750, 2,750 here. How about 28, how about, we'll just go a little easier. 2,850, 2,850, 2,850, just a hundred dollar increase, you can do that. A few less Starbucks each week, go. 2,850, 2,850, anyone, 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 anyone? 2,850, we got 2,750 right over here. 2,750 going once. 2750 going twice. Don't let him steal this. Sold. 2750. Thank you very, very much. It's going to such a great cause. Thank you. Here, wait. Where did Vanna go? Shucking his responsibilities. Here we go. You and your baby can watch the film together. I'm kidding. We'll take it outside. It's kind of heavy. Um, so thank you all very, very much. Uh, we are going to thank you, Paul. Thank you, thank you. Uh, we are going to roll right into the film now, and we're very, very excited. It's about a 60-minute film. We are very proud, of course, to have the producer and writer Amy Waddell. Quite nice, close relation to Ruth in the back of the room. Amy, uh, her daughter, Ruth's daughter, um, and John's daughter. Um, we are very thrilled to have her here. And she and I are gonna bring Ruth up on the stage after the film to have a nice Q&A dialogue with all of you. And of course, we may, we may sing happy birthday to Ruth. I think it's appropriate. Um, so we'll do that after the show, and then we'll be able to congregate back in the lobby again. Thank you all so much for being here. We're so proud to bring this film back. We had a great display of John Waddell's work when we showed this the last time and had it in the festival. We know you're gonna be impressed and pleased, and it's so iconic what the Waddells have meant to the art world and to our world here in Sedona. Thank you all. Please enjoy Rising. Thank you so much. I was a student at the Art Institute, and he was as well, more advanced student. And he did his first painting of me at that time. I have modeled for John, you know, over a period of over 50 years, so I've enjoyed modeling. I've modeled and not enjoyed it as well. <laughs> And then I've had times where I was perfectly okay with it. For John, fine, okay. John and I both 
grew up in a tradition of drawing from nature whether it's human beings or landscape john and ruth what al were married in nineteen forty nine when they graduated from the art institute of chicago that year the tradition of drawing from nature was basically obliterated by abstract expressionism which influenced the work of decades of artists but not john waddell <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome the birthday girl, Ruth Waddell. daughter and the producer and writer of the film, Amy Waddell. And I believe the first order of business since this glorious woman turns 97 in a couple of weeks. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday dear so excited to have you here Ruth thank you thank you thank you for allowing us to celebrate your special birthday and bring this film back and the beautiful art and Amy thank you for helping us arrange this I'm gonna ask a audience if you have questions or comments please raise your hand I'll come to you with the microphone talk to us about what's been happening since this film this film is about 10 years old what's happening at the studio what what's happening there now with you Ruth well I live there now and it's, it's an absolute dream to live among the works that John has left for us. There is so much love for the human form and the human being as expressed through the form. That was his, that was what he did. And uh, spending time with the work is a big, big treat for me. And you're invited to come in onesies and twosies <laughs> um, to visit. Um, and just be there. Just sit quietly or stand quietly. Pick one work that you like to, that draws your attention. And it's a wonderful experience. It really is. And Amy, can you tell them how they make those arrangements? I know we were going to tell them how we're Absolutely. Helping. If somebody wants to come to the ranch, they can call me. Ruth is open to them calling her number as well. And I'm in their local phone book. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not secretive about it. Right. <laughs> My phone number. And, and the, the email is very easy. It's just artbywedell at gmail.com. And I, I will get that one. So artbywedell. And there's some things on the... Oh, as you leave, yeah. there's little cards too, so you can take cards to get a hold on, of them. On the table out in the lobby. Yeah. That's still if you there. have not seen it, it is absolutely spectacular. Have any of you been out there already? Okay, so you all can attest. Should they go? Yes. yes. It's absolutely magnificent. So, Ruth, tell us about your own art and what inspires you. Well, as I mentioned in the film, briefly, um, really, nature has turned out to be full of richness, and human beings come under that category of nature. Landscapes, lately in the last several years I've been doing flowers. Before that I was down by the creek, I live on Spring Creek, and uh, enjoying are being drawn to trees. And mostly there were a lot of horizontal trees, trees that were living and trees that were dead. Uh, and I find when I work that the more I do, the more I see, the more I work on it, the more I see. And I'm sure some of you have had that experience as well. 
something about it or something about a person, for example, might excite you emotionally and inspire you. And then as you work with that person, you see more and more, just like in real life, as you get to know a person, you get to know more and more, get more depth into who they are. So art and life are parallel in that way. Well put. I think we have a question from your grandson, Sasha, over here. <laughs> so in the show, it said um, when Grandpa started drawing, but when did you start drawing? Well, I drew my whole life. There were whole periods of time where I didn't draw, but I started drawing when I was little, just like everybody else in my family did, just like you did, and you still draw. And the whole trick is, to keep doing it, more or less, depending on your life. But the way you grow and develop as an artist is by doing it, basically. Ruth, Ruth, is there anything that you haven't drawn or painted or done yet that you want to do? That's a great question. Right now, I'm not thinking of anything in particular, but that is a good question, because obviously, as we talked about the other day, Carol, Khan, and I, we're all works in progress. And if we're not works in progress, forget it. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that might come up, Patrick. I might, I might think of something that I want to do, but right at this moment. I don't know what that's going to be. Well, honey, you've got time. Take your time. <laughs> uh, Amy, I want to kind of direct this quick question to you and, and to Ruth. Filmmaker, obviously art runs in the family, producer, writer of this film. Can you take us back to this process? And I know in the beginning of the film, the robbery had happened, and that kind of was when Marla was going through Arizona. Was there going to be a film that was much different than this, or was that the impetus that sparked it? And gave it the, how did it, how did it get its direction? I guess I'm trying to say. Um, I think, I mean, it would be a question for Marlo. But when she first came to me and asked me if I would work on it with her, um, she was searching for the theme and she was searching for what the film might be about. She knew she wanted to go to the ranch and do something on John and Ruth. She'd been they'd been a big part of her creative life and her personal life since she was very young, and she felt like it was time to go and do this, do a tribute and. Um, kind of get in there, but I don't think at that time the theft was really um, the motivation. So she was kind of searching and then in structuring the film that com that piece of conflict, you know, st dramatic conflict, sort of rose up as a structure. Um, but as far as, you know, what she first wanted to do, I think it was just to to give some of what she had experienced with John and Ruth to the world. And it, it just kind of went that way. Because she has a background in news, she produced, C uh, I think, National CBS News, The Today Show. She had a lot of producerial and directing experience, a lot of documentary experience. Um, she Probably she went for that conflict a little bit more, just to give it some structure. Because, I mean, there are so many topics that she covered and she shot so I think she was just kind of searching around, and that was that was one way to put it together. Did I know it's, it's you can never say you know pick your favorite piece of art. It's like picking a favorite child. But is there something in particular that we you all see or drive by where his his work is displayed that you or that John particularly liked or felt very proud of? Do you recall Ruth? Well, the one work that was the closest to his heart, ultimately was what we call, for short, the Birmingham Group. The name of the sculpture is That Which Might Have Been, Birmingham, 1963. And some of you may have seen it. It's in the outdoor area of the Unitarian Congregation down in Phoenix. It's actually in uh, Paradise Valley. It's a uh, grouping of four figures, each one facing in the cardinal direction. And it's, uh, it was inspired the day of the bombing of the uh, 
Baptist Church in Birmingham, Alabama, where four little girls lost their lives. It, it was a turning point in the civil rights movement. Um, and John had a way of looking forward to what could be in the future. Not everybody went along with him on that. Uh, but that was what this was. Just think, if they hadn't lost their lives, they could have been grown up to be this distinctly individual and this, in other words, four distinctly <coughs> individual women. Beautiful. Um, and I'm going to come to Reverend Anthony, but, but um, I wanted to ask you, is there a particular work of yours? Oh, of mine. That you are the most, no, you answered it right with John. I was going to lead to yours, though. Is there a particular work of yours that you are most proud of as Ruth Waddell? I haven't decided yet. <laughs> you got to <laughs> Thank you, Ruth, for sharing. I had the pleasure of serving as minister at the Unitarian University Congregation of Phoenix and Paradise Valley. It was so inspiring to see the work of your beloved every day that I was there. So I can attest to it. It, it, it was so inspiring. In other words, he took art to a positive rather than to a negative. And I think he talks about that in the film that you just see, uh, viewed. I think we have one of his models in the audience. Delisa, are you here? There she is. Um, any other, other models in here? Wait, I'm going to come over to you. Do you mind if I bring you the microphone? Because um, I'm really curious. You know, John was famous for his dance parties and things that he had at the house to get inspired. <laughs> so talk to us about what, this is Delisa, you all just saw her in the, in the film. Um, can you tell us what was that like working, I mean you're very, you're exposed, you're vulnerable, that kind of thing. Take us to that studio setting and how comfortable was that working with John. He was the ultimate professional. Can you just share a little bit about that working side by side with him? Sure. It took me a long time before I agreed to model for John because I had heard uh, Jill was her name at the time. She said in the film you saw, okay, this was a three month project and then it turned into a 10 year project. Um, I didn't know if I wanted to make that commitment. And so I kept saying, no, no, making excuses. But then once, I don't know what it was that made me finally do it, but once I did, I was absolutely comfortable there. And it was like um, working in a space of um, transparency, I would say. I, I don't know how to explain it, but um, that I could feel myself and I could feel him both at the same time, very connected, that the work was being created not just from him, but from me as well. Um, that, that there was a feeling of co-creation, and I think that's why it was so hard to see it disappear when he would melt it off. <laughs> um, because there was something so personal, not only that it was your own body, but it was your own creative energy that went into it as well. And um, yeah, it just, it was very comfortable, and it was very, um, I don't know if I would say the word family, but um, I felt so comfortable with him. Like, I don't think I would feel comfortable if he was my dad. <laughs> like Amy. Um, but yeah, there was something that was natural and beautiful, and also maybe accepting of uh, your being, being uh, naked or being just seen to those depths. Mm -hmm. um, and that was a gift yes. to, to receive that as on the other side of the creation. How wonderful. Yeah. What well, was beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. 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 Thank
That happened to me after when she picked up her tickets in the box. I was like, Delisa, I know that name. <laughs> She's in our audience. Um, any other, any any questions from the audience? Right here. Oh, another model. Oh, another model. How about you? Can you can you share your experiences as well? Well, Delisa definitely sums it up a bit. Good to see you. <laughs> um, It was a dance when you um, watched John working. You know, he sometimes he would come up and he'd be looking at one, like maybe it was your ear, you know, and just like really focusing in on it. And then he'd spin around and go to where he was working and his fingers and his body would just be moving. His energy was like um, transformed into uh, the sculptures as well as yours. And if you look at John's sculptures, they're not stagnant. Um, I have sat and looked at some of those dancers knowing they were going to move. I know they're going to move. <laughs> Because they just, he's just captured a, a moment in movement um, and uh, being part of that dance. Um, it's kind of like um, an immortality kind of thing. There's something that's going to outlive me. Um, unless somebody melts it down. <laughs> um, you know, and so, um, yeah, it was, it was an experience uh, of sharing being an artist in the project. This is more a comment, but relative to the film, I saw in that film, and I want to thank you so much for it, the, um, a transition from exactly what you and the other models have said. This is, you see movement, you know, and, and growth and, and, you know, expression and, and rising, of course, is <laughs> the ultimate of that. But the film did that, had that same reaction to me. It was all the transitions just moved from one event into another in a kind of a free-flowing space, but it was all so natural. And it was almost like a dance in film, frankly. And I really appreciate that. Thank you. Lydia. <laughs> Hi, Ruth. Um, what, where is Rising now? Rising is at our studio. It's, Rising is at our studio. It's on the three walls of the interior of the large studio building. If we had a 50 foot high wall, it would be on the one wall because it was conceived as one. But the walls aren't that high. And by the way, the sculpture of Jenna, who just spoke, is outdoors, and John called that one American Beauty. <laughs> um, raise your hand and I'll come to you if you've got a question. Ruth, take us, and, and this could also be for Amy, what is it like, take us to your home, two artists living together, working together, being surrounded by the creativity. <laughs> what, what was that like? for you all these years and the beautiful love affair the two of you had? Well, it was like anybody else's life, really. <laughs> uh, I don't know how to describe it from the interior. It would be somebody else coming along and, and viewing it, I suppose, who would describe it. What would you say, Amy? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we had our everyday life. Uh, 
go to bed at night, you have three meals a day. <laughs> uh, some people say, I was so absorbed in my work, I forgot to eat. Well, that wasn't us. <laughs> but I think they had a very unique and profound um, partnership, both, both as a married couple, but also as artists. In a, in a time where, as it says in the film, where figurative work was not um, the most popular thing. You know, you, people say often, you know, if you go to Europe, you'll see a lot of figurative work. Um, you'll see the human form. It's not something to be ashamed of. But in America, there was a time where he was getting some NEA grants and he was getting more commissions. And, and even the figurative work was in public places um, across the US, not just in Phoenix. But that, that became maybe less common. And, and so the patrons tended to be people who would be putting it at their home or in their garden. or. So to have a whole life where that is what you're doing is figurative work, you really needed a partner who really understood your work and upheld what you were doing. Uh, my dad had, as he said, you know, it's very important for an artist to have ego strength, not ego, but ego strength to kind of persevere through everything. But at you know, this time in history to be doing that sort of work they had, they almost had to step away into this, for them, you know, it was kind of this paradise. They loved the ranch and he built a studio and he did not go to New York and Chicago and Paris and everywhere to, to you know, try to be in the flow of what was popular now. He just went up, he did his work. My mom began to do her work at a certain point again. She very much supported the students that came and lived with him very much supported his career you know we would all be very lucky to have a Ruth supporting our careers you know um, so she she made that possible for him I think on a huge level and I think he also really appreciated it and really would listen to her creative input um, he didn't listen to everybody's creative input and didn't even need it really, you know, but Ruth, he would listen to. So I, I think there's so many levels to their relationship, but one of them is, is that, just being able to do something that wasn't an easy thing to do and make it look very easy to everyone else. Beautiful, beautifully put, beautifully put. Anybody have any other questions before we begin to wrap it up? Right back here. No question here. Um, I'm going to take a minute before I start crying, but I um, just have to say that Amy and I became best friends at five years old. I don't know, was that 51 years ago? Shh. <laughs> so I, I had the beautiful experience, amazing experience to get to know the ranch. And every time I went to the ranch, my parents would bring me to the ranch or Ruth would bring us home from, from school one day. I would see the beautiful sculptures in that half hillside configuration and it was a little overwhelming for me and I wasn't used to that with my childhood and the way I was raised but through the years as Amy and I became closer and, and such dear friends it became so beautiful and of course as a young child you don't have the depth of what the arts really mean I think until later in life but when we would have sleepovers, your dad would constantly be in the foundry. He would be working endless hours. And Ruth, you were the strength beneath, I think, his artistic wings because you were such a strong, supportive uh, wife, mother. You were a huge factor of his success in his work, I do believe. Um, I had some amazing, I have amazing memories of the ranch. and. Amy dropped, locked me in their dryer one time <laughs> playing, and we played endless hours down by the creek and we just had a wonderful, wonderful time as children. It was a spaceship. It was a spaceship. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad she remembered to open the door and let me out. So. <laughs> So fast forward to these adult years and I, and I get to sit here and enjoy and watch this film and spend this precious time with you, Mama Ruth, 
at your 97th birthday month. I am honored and I love you and I adore you and your work and that you brought this beautiful person into the world and she got to be my best friend all these years. And so seeing John's work and seeing your work and everything that you have created together as a legacy is so powerful. And I just want to let you know that I have an appreciation for your work and for what you both have established more than words could ever describe to you. So I want to say to you both, I love you. And I want to say happy birthday to you, Mama Ruth. And um, thank you. Just mm -hmm. Love you very much. Oh, here we go. Grandson's got another one. So, first off, <laughs> Grandma is the best. She's very funny. And, um, well, she gives me a lot of chocolate. Um, she adores it. Um, so, um, and... I'm so happy that Mama, uh, Mommy, 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 um, born to me, um, so I could live, I don't know, um, and, um, she's really funny too, and, they're both funny, and, so, I'm really, I'm really happy that, um, I have them both. I've had especially fond memories of when, when John was with us. John and Ruth would never miss a ballet or a dance performance that we had here on the screen at the theater. They were right there, the, I mean, you know where you sat, right there, right in the front so they weren't disturbed by anybody else. So, cut, so imagine that, they're here for all the culture. Cut to, I think it was last year, were you celebrating your 96th birthday, I think? So I go over to the Belfry. We have a Monday happy hour group. And I go over to the Belfry. We're thinking, we're never going to see anybody we know in Cottonwood. And they're holding court at one of the bar tables is Ruth Waddell, <laughs> drinking and celebrating her birthday. God bless you, woman. <laughs> so I think it's time to go back and do that again, 97. So um, any parting words for our, our people who have come to adore you, my oh, dear? Thank you so much for coming. It's wonderful to see each and every one of you here. And let's do it again. And thank you, Patrick, so much for this. Thank you, Supers. Thank you, Supies. Thank you, Reverend Anthony. Thank you very, very much. We appreciate you. In the spirit of rising, give it up. Come on. In the spirit of no, rising, no, rise. If you are able, please. If you are able. And thank you, Ruth. Thank you, Amy. In the spirit of rising. And watch the Red Rock News in the coming weeks. Carol Kahn wrote a beautiful story. She spent a lot of time with Ruth and Amy. So there's a very big story hitting on Ruth in the coming issues of the Red Rock News. Thank you, Carol, for doing that. Thank you, Ruth. Thank you, Amy. Thank you, Sasha. Thank you all so much for being here. I'm going to whisk Ruth out the stage door. Thanks for coming.